Hello Normans and welcome to this week's Norman News, I'm Jonah Dunn. And I'm Jasmine Singorian. Stay tuned for news on Avengers Endgame and the measles outbreak. And more on today's pennant party. Hi, I'm Eric Meradian and I'm here with this week's Norman News. And I'm Brianna Young with this week's entertainment news. Around the school in 30 minutes, this is the, the Norman, Norman News. news. AP exams begin next Monday, May 6th. All morning exams begin at 8 a.m. and afternoon exams begin at 12 p.m. If you have a morning test, make sure to arrive before 7.30 a.m. at your testing room. If you have an afternoon test, make sure to arrive before 12.15 p.m. Be sure to check Jupiter Grades for more information and updates on room assignments. Nana Jasmine with news on Miss Teen USA. Thanks, Jonah. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Miss Teen USA aired live on Sunday, April 28th, live from Reno, Nevada. Over 51 com contestants competed to take home the national title, but there was only one winner. Can you guess who won? Well, 18-year-old Kaylee Garris from Connecticut took home the title while rocking her fabulous curls on stage. Before she competed, she said in an interview that along her road to the crown, many people among the way suggested that she straighten her hair or wire extensions but she actually won her hair with naturally curly hair. Well, she is a true definition of beauty and brains. Let's wait to see her new sister queen as M Miss Teen USA occurs tomorrow. Now to Eric with sports. Thanks, Jasmine. This week was pretty crazy in soccer. PSG and Rennes played the French Cup final where Rennes beat the French champion on champions on penalties. What well, the big talking point in this match, however, was how two of their star players reacted. Right before penalties, Wonder Kid Killian Mbappe got a straight red for a terrible tackle, and after the game, Neymar punched a Ren supporter and is likely looking at a multiple game suspension. This has been another year that PSG has failed to get more than one trophy in a season. Now to Genevieve with more sports. Thanks, Eric. Despite being listed as questionable with ankle injuries, both Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson will start Sunday's Game 1 against the Rockets. Curry, who has a history of ankle injuries, sprained his right ankle early in Friday's series against the Clippers, but will start for the series opener. Thompson sprained his ankle later in the same game, with the injury being described as significant by Kerr. Sunday afternoon, ESPN's Adrian Wanorowski reported that an MRI Tom on Thompson's ankle came back clean and he would be a game-time decision Thompson said after Friday's game in which he scored just nine points that he expects to play fully in today's seri series opener with the Rockets. All we could do is wait and see how they do. Now to Kayla with fashion. Thanks, Genevieve. This week, Emily Ratajkowski was seen in L.A. looking cute as always. This model wore bright red overalls as she took her dog for a walk. The red overalls were from the brand Dickies in the style Relax Twill. She wore a black tube top under, adding white sneakers and shades to complete her look. Her bright one piece is valued at an estimated $70. That's all for this week. Now to Brie with entertainment news. Thanks, Kayla. Avengers Endgame has grossed an estimated $350 million in its domestic theatrical debut and then $1.2 billion in total worldwide. As it stands, the 22nd film produced by Marvel Studios has shattered practically every single box office record imaginable. The biggest worldwide debut, the biggest domestic debut, and the biggest domestic opening day. Even adjusting for ticket price inflation, Endgame's domestic debut remains light years ahead of every other film, blasting well past a $300 million threshold that many thought was mathematically impossible to reach. Demand for Endgame, however, has proven insatiable, with Fandango reporting that it sold out over 8,000 showtimes and advanced purchases, and the fact that many multiplexes chose to blanket Endgame on most, if not all, of their available screens. Some theaters added late night and early morning screenings, and a handful of theaters even elected to not close at all over the weekend. Endgame is at least guaranteed to propel Marvel Studios past the $20 billion mark in global box office grosses. Now on to Tatian's movie review on Teen Spirit.
Thanks, Bree. Most people will be heading to the theaters this weekend to watch to check out Avengers Endgame, but with so many showings sold out, another option when looking for a new movie to watch is Teen Spirit. Teen Spirit is a movie about a girl named Violet who has a dream to win the Teen Spirit singing contest. She befriends a driver who then pretends to be her guardian due to her parents not supporting her dreams. Follow along Violet's dream and see what happens. Now grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's new movie trailer. Somebody said you got a new friend. This round is extremely competitive. You'll be up against some of the best singers in the country. Does she love you better than I can? Sing from here. Mum, mum, mum. You can do this, Violet. Sing from your heart. I never dreamed I would make it this far. Life comes down to these moments, Violet. <sighs> Don't take them for granted. So far away, but still so near. The lights go down, the music on. Around is California Pizza Kitchen. This is a perfect place for literally anything. Vegetarian or not, they have so many options, ranging from pizza, salads, fish, pasta, cute appetizers, chicken, and more. A perfect place to go for a quick lunch with friends or for a yummy dinner. I highly recommend CBK. Definite 10 out of 10. Now to Health with Yasmin. Thanks, Sophie. More than 1,000 students and staff members at two Los Angeles universities were quarantined on campus or sent home this week. Those under the quarantine were instructed to stay at home and to avoid contact with others. They were also barred from traveling by public transportation, including planes, trains, buses, or taxis. At UCLA, 129 students and faculty were quarantined. All but 46 had been cleared by Friday. The Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention recommend taking the vaccine for everyone over a year old. Now to Eric with World News. Thanks, yes. Thank last week, the 104th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, and last Friday, Portugal, Portugal became the newest of countries to officially recognize the genocide as a genocide. This will be undoubtedly po unpopular with the Turkish government, as it tends to recall diplomats and make scathing statements about countries when they recognize the genocide, as they did with Germany. Now to Natalie with some national news. Thanks, Eric. President Donald Trump announced Friday the U.S. would withdraw from an international arms treaty that he says allows foreign bureaucrats to trample on the Second Amendment, but which its authors believe serves as a vital check on the proliferation of weapons among countries. The decision to abandon the 2014 arms trade treaty announced during the president's remarks before the National Rifle Association's annual meeting in Indianapolis offers a notable win for gun advocates who have supported Trump. Critics say U.S. withdrawal undermines international efforts to draw attention to the spread of weapons around the globe. Now to technology with Nathan. Thanks, Natalie. The, uh, the original iPhone SE came out in March of 2016. It was a great investment for some people as it is a small phone that has most of the necessary features. Apple is suspected to soon make the iPhone SE 2, which is supposed to be small, but maybe even have the iPhone X design with Face ID and other cool features. Take a look at this new product if it hits the market. And now, passing it on to Jonah with news on medical technology. Thanks, Nathan. Researchers have shown that existing optical fiber technology could be used to produce microscopic 3D images of tissue inside the body, paving the way towards 3D optical biopsies. Unlike normal biopsies, where tissue is harvested and then sent off to a lab for analysis, 
Optical biopsies enable clinicians to examine living tissue within the body in real time. This minimally invasive approach uses ultra-thin microendoscopes to peer inside the body for diagnosis or during surgery, but normally produces only two-dimensional image. We are excited to see this move us into the future. Now let's go to Jasmine with opinion. Thanks, Jonah. Social media platforms, how might it change the way we think? Well, whether you're aware or not, social media bias is really real, and it might have more of an influence on us than we might realize. Earlier in 2019, Facebook banned users from sharing content from right wing platform Zero Hedge. Facebook then called the decision a mistake. I'm sorry, but banning a whole website from their content being shared is not a mistake. I believe that just because social media a social media platform doesn't agree with what their users have to share doesn't mean that they can filter out that content. Not only is this d discrimination, but they're also making a massive mistake considering the fact that it's not just one user who's conservative. Large brands like Facebook should be neutral public forums for the sake of their own customers and their own brand. Now let's send it back to Jonah. Thanks Jasmine. The College Center is celebrating Seniors Day May 1st during lunch at the Senior Pennant Party in the EDC. There will be pennant decorating, food, giveaways and more. Even if, even if you are not planning on attending a college or university next year, you are still welcome to join in the fun and celebrate the end of your high school career with your friends. There will be a raffle and a dorm decor, decor giveaway so you can start getting the things you need before you set up to college. Now to Jasmine. Thanks, Jonah. If you're trying to plan your summer and have any interest of any of the following extracurricular activities such as basketball, cross country, football, lacrosse, soccer, tennis, cooking, ceramics, volleyball, or audio production, I have the best summer boot camp for you. It's only for weeks so you don't go crossing off other planned activities yet. The Beverly Hills Education Foundation is having a 2019 High School Summer Academy here at Beverly Hills High School from four people interested in culinary, ceramics, or audio production from June 10th to June 14th. Sports programs will be from June 3rd to June 28th, and the Summer Academy will be happening for two semesters. First semester is from June 3rd to the 18th, from 8 a.m. to 1.20 p.m., and second semester will be from June 19th to July 3rd, from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Make sure to sign up if you're interested. Now to weather. Morgan back at it again with this week's weather forecast for the week of April 29th. Right now, all cities in the Los Angeles County area are seeing stable temperatures hovering around the 70 to 75 degree margin with partial cloud coverage. Moving forward into the week, Tuesday brings nearly identical temperatures with Los Angeles, Beverly Hill, and Santa Monica all seeing temperatures of the mid 60s with cloud coverage in the morning and clear skies towards the evening. As you can see, on Wednesday, the beginning of May has temperatures ranging from the mid-60s to the low 70s, keeping the overcast day nice and cool. As Thursday rolls around, we see yet again more clouds and temperatures of the high 60s to the low 70s. As the week continues to be cloudy, Friday brings less cloudy and more temperatures with the low 70s and high 60s. On Saturday, the beginning of the week brings a mostly sunny day with temperatures across the board in the low 70s. Thanks for watching this week's weather forecast from KBF6. I'm Alana Morgan. Thanks, Alana, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned next week for more Norman, Norman News. News.